Devin Witherspoon and Tariq Woolen. That's going to be one of the most insane corner duos we've seen in a long, long time. And I don't think enough people are putting respect on this concept. So many people thought Pete Carroll and John Schneider were insane that they didn't take Jalen Carter at the fifth pick in the draft. And after week one, Jalen Carter was looking pretty damn good for the Eagles. And Devin Witherspoon was unfortunately on the sideline with an injury. But ever since he came back, I think we've all figured out and realized why Pete Carroll and the Seahawks and John Schneider and the Seahawks and everybody in that building wanted Devin Witherspoon, especially considering the fact that he's going to be side by side or a duo on opposite sides of the field, whatever you want to call it, with Tariq Woolen. Devin Witherspoon's week four against the New York Giants was absolutely unreal. And we'll get into the two sacks, the pick six for 97 yards, four pass deflections, his great PFF grades, all that. But it was so good that his odds for Defensive Rookie of the Year in Vegas from Caesar Sportsbook went from plus 1,600 to plus 150. And to explain that for those that don't know, if you put 100 bucks, you would have won 1600 $1,600, and now that $100 would win you 150 So he 10 x his odds to win the Rookie of the Year. They really think he's going to win it. What's really fun about being a Seahawks fan is that it's going to take the world a while to catch on to exactly what's happening here. We still see a lot more coverage about Sauce Gardner in New York, the young guy that was competing for the Rookie of the Year type of stuff with Tariq Woolen. But guess what? This team is building something super special. We're out in Seattle in the top corner of the Northwest, and it's going to be a while before it's talked about, before people realize we have the next Legion of Boom potentially coming into place. Devin Witherspoon, Tariq Woolen. This thing is going to be special. And the thing I love most about Devin Witherspoon is he doesn't remind me necessarily of people from the Legion of Boom at the corner position. He doesn't remind me of Richard Sherman. He reminds me of a hybrid of other people. And I've heard so many people mention both Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor. And the thing with Devin Witherspoon is he is a hybrid type of guy. He is a safety slash corner type of dude. Forget the label of corner under his name. That's what he is. And he hits like Cam Chancellor. And he's at every play like Earl Thomas. One thing I noticed on Monday night is no matter where the ball was, by the end of the play, it felt like you saw Devin Witherspoon, number 21, somewhere on the screen. And I remember that distinctly with Earl Thomas. It was like, oh, there's that guy flying over the pile. Like, there, that was Earl Thomas. There's the guy, like, at the bottom of the pile coming up. That was Earl Thomas. That's how I feel with Devin Witherspoon. But on top of it, I feel like a couple times a game, you're just hearing that pop on the screen, and you look down, it's, oh, that was number 21, Devin Witherspoon. He talks that talk. He's not scared of backing down to everyone. And he plays in so many different coverages when the Seahawks need him to do so. And he did that this week. Let's remember that he was not literally putting in the same position every single week. This last week with no Kobe Bryant, with no Artie Burns, the guy had to move around and make sure that he was filling in positions for other people. He did it and he did it well. What's going on? I just wanted to have a quick note in the middle of the video. If you know my videos, I do this often, but I am just asking for your help and support or I'm asking you to be part of something cool. I've been getting an amazing amount of support from you guys on our new merchandise. We have the blue ski mask shirts, the Legion of Spoon. We have Mariner stuff if you're into Mariners. We have a lot of different things on the site. So please head to sportsontapseattle.com and you can check out all our gear. The link will be in the bio. I also have some of the shirts on my YouTube shop. And if you can't buy a shirt, you can't afford it, you don't like any of the designs, you just don't want to buy one or you don't want to buy anything right now, still put your email in the box and you'll be part of our giveaways weekly where we're going to be giving away vintage Seattle sports gear, Sonics, Mariners, Seahawks, all that good stuff. Sportsontapseattle.com. And you can also find that YouTube page, our podcast page below. But if you go to the site, you'll see the merch, our podcast, everything there. So please support and let's get back to the video. He won the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. Not the Defensive Rookie of the Week, the Defensive Player of the Week. He had seven tackles, two sacks, another two tackles for loss, and of course, the 97 yard touchdown interception return for a touchdown that pretty much sealed any possibility for the Giants to come back earning the defensive player of the week in the NFC and not many rookies get that but one of his friends Tariq Woolen 
actually did that himself. There's only been five Seahawks rookies in the history of the franchise to ever win a Defensive Player of the Week award. The funny thing is, it happened last year as well. It happened in week six, Tariq Woolen, the 2022 week six defensive player of the week. So that tells you a little something about these two corners we have. But before that, it hadn't happened since 2004. It's almost been 20 years since the Seahawks rookie defensive player won the defensive player of the week. And Tariq Woolen and Devin Witherspoon did it back to back weeks. And he's the first rookie DB to have two sacks and a defensive touchdown in a game since 2000. It's been 23 years since a rookie DB has done what he did on Monday night. We can't sleep on how freaking good this guy is. His PFF grade was a 90.9 in week four, which made him first among all rookies in the entire NFL and second amongst all corners in the NFL. So as we continue to watch Devin Witherspoon and you see the tape on the screen and you continue to watch what this guy does, he looks like he's ready to be a phenomenal star in the NFL at his position. And that's what's most exciting about this guy. It's not that he needs this, you know, long time to develop. It's not like he was a Richard Sherman fifth round project type of guy. It wasn't like Tariq Woolen where a lot of people passed on him last year and the Seahawks were like, we'll take a shot on this guy. They knew this guy was probably the number one corner, him and Christian Gonzalez on the board. And they said, we're going to take this guy because he can fit in and help this defense become really good right away. The Seahawks don't want to wait any longer for this defense to improve. They've already been waiting. You know, last year, there was a lot of up and downs for this defense, even though they are starting to get those pieces. So this offseason, they decided we're going to bring back Bobby Wagner. Jordan Brooks is going to come back. We're going to go get Julian Love to add to the Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs safety group. We're going to go get Draymond Jones after we lose Shelby Harris. Draymond Jones is who they wanted in the Russell Wilson trade originally, but they settled on Shelby Harris. They ended up getting that guy either way. So at the end of the day, the Seahawks are kind of done just waiting for it to all work out on the defense. They wanted to go get Devin Witherspoon in this draft and solidify what they've been doing on this defense through the drafts, through free agency. I mean, over the last few years in drafts and free agency and different things, they brought back Bobby Wagner. They, they drafted a Jordan Brooks. They drafted Boye Mafe. They tried to pick up more pieces on the line this year with Derek Hall and with Mike Morris. They went and got Nawosu. They went and got a whole bunch of pieces that they're trying to piece together to make this defense finally good. And I think this guy, Devin Witherspoon, was the piece that they really wanted the most in this draft. And they went and got him because they knew he could solidify this defense. And it's finally starting to look better. We're finally getting pressure on a quarterback. We're finally stopping people when we need to make stops. We're finally not getting torn up by quarterbacks. I don't care if it was Daniel Jones and Andy Dalton. At the end of the day... Every team sometimes gets torn up by all these quarterbacks, but the Seahawks are not letting it happen just to them. One of the craziest parts about it all is the next-gen stats on how fast these corners are. Devin Witherspoon ran 20.25 miles per hour on his 97-yard pick six on Monday. His total distance was 117.3 yards, and it was the second longest this season. The Seahawks added 17.8% on their win probability as he scored. It was a huge deal. But the crazy part about him running 20.25 miles per hour is Tariq Woolen was running downfield, blocking him at 22.25 miles per hour, the fastest play from scrimmage by any player this NFL season. And let's put some perspective on this. Last season, the fastest in-game speed was attributed to wide receiver Paris Campbell at 22.11 miles per hour, which is still less than what Tariq Woolen did. Last year, Tariq Woolen on his first career touchdown, I think it was in Detroit, the pick six, he hit 21.52 miles per hour. Another perspective to put this in is DK Metcalf when he chased down Buda Baker was at 22.64 miles per hour. So he was pretty much above last year's highest guy in Paris Campbell and slightly below where DK Metcalf was a few years ago against Buda Baker. But what's crazy is Tariq Woolen at 22.5 miles per hour is just a little bit short of Tariq Hill, who has the fastest recorded NFL speed ever at 23.24. The point of that was these two corners are both speedy. Now, Woolen might have a little bit of extra on him that it's unbelievable to see for a guy like him and a corner like him, but you have two corners 
one, getting the pick, going 117 yards in total while going 20 miles per hour. And then you have your other corner, the other guy you got last year, going 22 miles per hour, which is one of the top five or six fastest speeds in the history of the NFL, blocking downfield for him, for him to get a 97-yard touchdown. It is absolutely insane what this duo can do. And I feel like maybe I'm not giving enough credit to Tariq Woolen on the other side, but obviously we all know who Tariq Woolen is. I thought he had a better year than Sauce Gardner last year. Yes, I'm biased. I'm a Seahawks fan. Say it all you want. At the end of the day, there's so many numbers you could look on each side and back up Sauce or back up Tariq Woolen. So for me, I'm always going to lean the guy that I like a little more, which is obviously Tariq Woolen, and I watch him more. So don't want to hear that in the comments because at the end of the day, they're both, they were the top two corners probably last year, like in terms of young guys. But with this, I don't want to let this, you know, be a whole like, oh, look at Witherspoon. He changed the defenses. It's both of them. But Witherspoon is breaking out. Witherspoon is the guy that we spent our fifth pick in the draft on. And he's the guy who finalized, I feel like, the entire Russell Wilson Bronco saga. All of it was finalized by Devin Witherspoon, and it couldn't have been better. And just to reminisce a little bit, that's where I wanted to get to. The Russell Wilson Seahawks trade after Monday night really comes to light now. I feel like when I got to watch what happened in that game, I got to actually feel a lot of the impact of the Russell Wilson trade. Remember, the Seahawks traded away Russell Wilson. The Seahawks got Devin Witherspoon, who was the star of the night Monday night. They got edge rusher Derek Hall. They got Boye Mafe who also had a great game. He's been a great addition to this defense this year. He's been a great piece of this defense. Offensive tackle Charles Cross. He's hurt right now, but he's probably, him and Abe Lucas, are our best offensive linemen. And then two other pieces from Monday night. Noah Fant had a 60-something yard catch or 50-something yard catch from when Geno Smith went down, Drew Locke, who got to come in on Monday night and play a couple snaps and actually looked pretty good for that drive and helped the Seahawks go down and score a touchdown in just a minute or two and help the Seahawks seal things up before the half. Now, when you look at this Russell Wilson trade and you look how Devin Witherspoon's playing and you look at Boye Mafe and Charles Cross and Drew Locke coming in and being a phenomenal backup situation, that's an amazing backup to have, and tight end Noah Fant, there is a lot of positivity from that trade. And this is not to shit on Russell Wilson. It's just to say that forever, when I look at Devin Witherspoon and see him make plays like he did the other night and see that the Seahawks are fine without Russell Wilson, a.k.a. they're fine with Geno Smith or whoever else ends up being the guy, if Russell Wilson continues to have less success in his career in Denver, we're going to look at this trade and say, that's okay. We got Devin Witherspoon. We got Boye Mafia. We got Charles Cross, a left tackle that is the most important position for an offense maybe outside a quarterback. All of it came into place. All of it came into fruition, all based off this trade. At the end of the day, my excitement stems from nothing but having young guys on the team and making it really exciting. All of the Jalen Carter talk, you can start believing in what this team's building and you get to see the vision that Pete Carroll and John Schneider had and that they always have. We like to hate on Pete Carroll because he's a little older or we had a couple bad drafts in between our phenomenal drafts. At the end of the day, they did it again. The last two drafts were unreal. The last two drafts has brought us a lot of studs. And we're going to have two superstar corners from the last two drafts. And that's thanks to Pete Carroll and John Schneider. So it was a really nice full circle moment seeing Devin Witherspoon finally do that. Not finally, but you know what I mean. It felt good to have that game. So please like and subscribe. And please comment below. What video do you want me to do next? I have a video that I'm thinking about doing. Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll comp comparison thing. It's very interesting, but let me know what you want to see. Like and subscribe. Any support means the world to me. And as always, like I told you in the middle of the video, check out the sportsontapseattle.com. Sportsontapseattle.com. That's where you'll find our merch, our podcasts, everything. I appreciate y'all, and we'll be back next time. Peace.